Cover and support begins in 3, 2, 1. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Nurture and Support, a recommendation podcast. I'm Kelly Tool at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter. And with me, as always, is Ebola Mel. Yes, Ebola. Ebola has come to Texas, as we all knew it would. So, uh, yeah, my community is all in an uproar, but hopefully that situation will be um, toned down by the time anyone hears this podcast. But I am Mel, at Karmic9 on Twitter, and as we promised you, Matt Shivers is back to prove to you that he has not joined the undead. And this may be our final transmission, depending how the uh, Ebola thing goes. But hello, Matt Shivers here, Matt Shivers VO on Twitter. Excellent. Glad to have you back, Matt. Um, Thank you. you know, I didn't get a chance to, to game plan beforehand on getting more free stuff from you, but if something occurs to us during the show, <laughs> we'll, we'll <laughs> throw it out and say, hey, could you say that again? <laughs> Whatever. But, Trickier uh, than a hobbit, you people. Trickier than a hobbit. Indeed. Thanks again for that. There is uh, joy in our hearts at the end of every uh, podcast where we go. And take it away, Matt. <laughs> <Do anything. laughs> Absolutely. It's like... this, at this point, we don't even know our own email. Nope. Or probably the website, because you say it every show. So we don't even have to remember anymore. Much like the Internet, I'm making you dumber. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm good with that. <laughs> I'm going to hang a big old Mission Accomplished banner behind me. There you there go. There you go. I would do that. We record this in a Google Hangout for, for those of you who are listening to the podcast and hadn't uh, we hadn't mentioned that before, uh, and I've had struggles with my Google Hangout capabilities recently. So Matt could probably do that and do that electronically. Me, I'd, I'd have to get a Sharpie and just write it on a piece of paper and hold it up because that's how it rolls for me these days. Not that I'm bitter at all. Uh, Not at all. And on that uplifting note, we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, it's a movie uh, done in the century, which is always a good thing for me. Uh, it's not too old. I think, I believe 2006 was some of its initial small release. And then actually in 2010 is when it came out on DVD uh, and was in the theaters for a while. And the name of this, uh, it's a documentary, and it's called Who is Harry Nilsson and Why is Everybody Talking About Him? And uh, it runs um, just about two hours, and it basically tells his, his whole story. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, if you, if you heard his songs, you know exactly who it is. And typically, and it's actually even mentioned in the documentary, when his name comes up, there's one of two reactions. People either look at you blankly and go, who? Or they immediately know, and they know a lot about him. So just checking a, a, ra- a random audience, maybe the two people with me on the podcast, Matt, Harry Nilsson, any familiarity? Uh, I know the name, but I would have to Google it right now. Okay. Well, you, you won't need to because I'll talk about it. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and Mel? No. No. Can't say that I, I have heard of it. Okay. So he um, he started in the 60s, has just one of the most uh, amazing voices in the world. So he was the original. He wrote One is the Loneliest Number, what became a Three Dog Night hit. Yes. He had done a version of that. Midnight Cowboy, Everybody's Talking, uh, the same song from that. He sang. That was one of the few songs that he didn't write that got airplay. Uh, Me and My Arrow, Let Me Tell You About My Best Friend, uh, Put the Lime in the Coconut and Drink It All Up, all those types of things. And as soon as many of these you hear, you'd recognize. But the guy just had an incredible uh, voice. But uh, the, the documentary covers kind of the whole gamut of, of how he went through. And they have a lot of people who interacted with uh, sharing some stories about him which included uh, in the uh, actual people that they interviewed, Ringo Starr, uh, Robin Williams, um, Eric Idle uh, from Monty Python, a lot of the people that worked with him uh, musically, uh, Van Dyke Parks and all those folks. And they just kind of tell the story. Um, William uh, from Monty Python and Mickey Dolenz, who apparently was a fast friend of Harry Nilsson. Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees uh, has a lot of airtime in this movie telling stories of Harry. Uh, and basically, the, the upshot came as soon as Harry hit full stride. The last knock you ever wanted on your door was from Harry Nilsson because it would mean you'd be leaving your house and it might be days or weeks until you returned back because he kind of lived life to the full. Uh, <laughs> but this really runs his whole story of his father left when he was uh, a very small child, mother raised him. They grew up in a lot of poverty. 
Uh, he um, ended up just eventually at, at, I believe, 17, hit the road and uh, went out to California and just started working at a movie theater, collecting receipts. And after a while, he went over to the bank and said, hey, I know how to kind of tabulate stuff. So he started working at the bank and he'd work at the bank until one in, at night running their actually their IT shop. Uh, then he'd go drink from 1 to 2, which is as late as the bars were open. And in the morning, he'd get up and uh, pitch his songs to different folks. And his first major sale was Cuddly Toy to the Monkees, which came a Davy Jones song and all that. So he created a full-scale cartoon musical called The Point, which me and my arrow comes from. And it's all about point of view. You have a point, point of perspective. It's a, it's a whole uh, cartoon series of everybody in this, um, in this land has a pointy head. And then this child with a round head gets born, you know, issues around acceptance and all that. And eventually, oh, hey, the kid has a point. And so just lots of cleverness uh, from there. One thing that's near and dear to my heart is that he recorded uh, an album exclusively of Randy Newman songs called Nilsson Sings Newman. Huh. And I uh, just did nothing but Randy Newman songs through there. And uh, I love Randy Newman. I think Randy Newman's a great composer. Randy is not the greatest singer in the world. So you get a chance <laughs> with Nilsson Sings Newman to have these amazing compositions by Randy Newman sung by somebody who can just knock it out of the park. So it's a, it's a fascinating story. It's got some... Um, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's a, a rough life, and, and unfortunately, the story ends that he does, he does pass away, uh, largely as a consequence of his, his, his rougher uh, lifestyle. But you get this kind of sense of him getting started, becoming a self-made man, having some tremendous uh, success in uh, a couple of albums. Uh, when the Beatles were coming over to the United States and they were interviewing him, they were saying, "So, who are you influenced by? Who's your favorite?" American group, and they all said Nilsson was their favorite one uh, from there. And so so you get to see some of the kind of interactions there. He had had uh, some pretty strong success, and then it was almost as if he got in almost a self-destructive mode. Uh, he always went to the tune of his own drummer, so he did. Uh, he recorded an album of standards. He did the Nilsson Sings Newman stuff, so he just kind of went wherever he wanted to. He ended up pairing up with John Lennon quite a bit uh, later, uh, and uh, outside of getting kicked out of a Smothers Brothers reunion show, uh, visibly, which is one of their big things. Uh, they recorded an album called Pussycats. And in that, they both kind of came from the same background uh, where their, their fathers left them early. They both were very angry about it. Lennon was a little more public about his anger, where Nelson kind of kept it inside. But they, so they were kind of really close, but also very competitive. And so they basically, in the recording of that album, were trying to sing the loudest, harsh, harshest, most destructively loud vocals as they could back and forth to see who could do it worse, to where they said there was actually blood showing up on the microphones uh, oh. from it. And so he kind of, with that song, took what was, you know, just an amazing uh, voice. And then it was still good after that, but it didn't just soar like a like many of the other things there. So it's a pretty interesting thing. He was the guy that scored and did all the music for Popeye, uh, which is a little bit of the Robin uh, Williams connection from there. So huh. yeah. very career. His last stuff was he sang uh, the closing song to the Fisher King. And this was you know, still a very nice voice, but just, you know, just a little bit of an echo of what it was to begin with. But uh, it's an interesting story. He has success. He kind of loses success. He had, it was very important because he grew up in poverty to build a lot of money up for his family. All that got embezzled away. He had to restart again. And he kind of, you know, the story ends with him unfortunately passing, but having done some things financially, so his family was well taken care of. And uh, it's a, it's kind of an interesting thing. And you get to, you meet his, his final wife. He was married three times. The last wife uh, they had a, he, that he stayed with for Till he died, very, very very long time in terms of they were married for I think like 16 years. Just it was like they're probably the perfect person on the planet to pair up with them because she appeared to be just like completely unflappable and just kind of um, just a she's just a real comes across as extremely likable with her head on her shoulders and just kind of like well that's Harry and this kind of thing. So <laughs> I really enjoy it. You'll get to hear a lot of stuff that you said oh he did that he did that um, and it's just pretty fascinating. Get some behind the scenes stuff and it's just pretty fun to listen to. So it's who's uh, who is Harry Nilsson and why is everybody talking about him and it's on Netflix. And that's my recommendation for this week. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. That's not my era of music. So I did not know his name, but I know many, many of those songs you were talking about. So. And you're right. Randy Newman, not a stupendous singer. 
Exactly. He's no, he's no crooner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think uh, we're ready for Matt's recommendation. What are you after us this week? Okay. Uh, I'm going to the land of comic books, uh, the land of uh, independent comic books, and this one's called Touching Evil, and it's by Dan Doherty. And it's really, really cool. It's got a, a really neat concept to it. It's about Ada Mansfield. Ada is a single mom. She's a criminal lawyer, and uh, she's the brand new bearer of this ancient curse. So here's the curse: she can kill anyone she touches, only if they're evil. So this curse senses evil in people, and <laughs> by the single touch, they drop dead. Keep her away from me. That's right. Well, I, I think you're I'm looking for 100% evil, not 92% evil. So, so I just you, like a bull or something. Right, right. right. And it might depend on your mood on the day, Kelly. Gotcha. So just for, for, for safety's sake, stay away from her. It's, uh, it's, it's really great. It's up to book five right now. There are five issues. I have four of them. I haven't, I haven't read the fifth one yet. Along with this curse comes immortality. So... There are some people after Ada, uh, there are some very nasty people after Ada who managed to catch up to her, and I'm not going to spoil too much, but they do shoot her in the chest and take her and uh, to, to bury her in the forest, but because of this curse, uh, she heals, and she's fine. Everything's, everything's okay, she's fine. <laughs> but I, I loved it from the word go. Dan Doherty is a, a, a very talented dude. He's a musician. He's also a, uh, a strip comic writer. He writes a comic strip called Beardo. Uh, so BeardoComics.com is where you can uh, get links to all of his stuff. I really like where the story is going. Some people know about the curse. Some people want to use the curse for their own ends, good or evil. And I can't wait to get my hands on book five, which wasn't quite ready yet while I was at Wizard World in Chicago about a month ago. It was still being, uh, I think it was still being colored. The covers on this on these books are amazing. The cover art is by uh, Stephen Bryant, and a lot of the coloring is done by uh, Wesley Wong. And this is just like a, a trifecta of, of very, very talented people working on this. So I highly recommend it. Touching Evil, BeardoComics.com. And the issues are... About five bucks an issue, but well worth it. Um, and I'm a big supporter of uh, you know independent comics and independent media. So that is my recommendation this week. So is she a criminal lawyer or a criminal lawyer like Saul Goodman? <laughs> no, no, she's not like Saul Goodman. She's she's not a criminal pause lawyer. She's a criminal lawyer running oh. running those two words together. Okay. Do you know if they're available digitally? I don't know if they're available digitally. I, I, I don't think so right now, but I can check out. I can check that out. Maybe we can put that in the comics. Dan actually won uh, a Shell Dorf Award for self-published comics uh, the year the first issue was released, and I think he was up for a Shell Dorf this year as well. But I don't know if uh, I don't know if he got it. I want to say that he did, but I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, cool. But it's just really, really, really good stuff. It's fun stuff. It's a great concept, and the art is magnificent. Cool. Well, I'll check that out. I like a lot of the indie stuff over the mass-produced. Right. Uh, and check out check out Beardo, his comic, his his sort of daily slash week. I think it's ma mainly a daily comic strip. Could be weekly. Dan used to be a, a a barista at Starbucks, so some of those jokes stem from. Um, and really, it's pulled from from daily life, sort of slice of life stuff. It's good stuff. Cool. Well, I'm going to definitely check that out. So I guess that makes it my turn. Um, I have what's unusual for me is something that's free for all of you this week because I'm usually the one going, hey, throw money at this, throw money at this. But this week I have a free game for everyone. Now, I could possibly be behind the curve on this one, and everybody may know about it. So if you all already know about it, tell me. But it is a zombie game called Use Holy Water, and it's available on iOS and on Android. And it's just a fun shooter type game that uh, you, you start the game with uh, a few bullets and some health, and zombies creep across the screen. And the graphics are, are pretty good. These aren't like pixelated zombies. These are drawn zombies. And you shoot them. And like a lot of the, the slightly more advanced games, you will run out of bullets. 
So the way to reload is you have to stop touching the screen, which is very hard when the screen is filling up with zombies. And so you keep the more you keep tapping the screen trying to kill them, the less is going to happen and they're going to get you and they're going to kill you. It's a very simplistic game, but it's oddly addicting in that it gets pretty hard. You will generally get mobbed, and that's the point at which you need to use the holy water. You will pick up little bottle, little blue bottles as you kill some zombies, and you don't get a lot of help in the game to figure out what you're supposed to do, but you're like, oh, hey, or at least if you're me, you're like, what's this little blue thing of water? I play too much Diablo, so I'm like, <laughs> blue is mana. Well, no, in this game, it's holy water. And you tap the holy water and poof, all the little monsters on your screen get holy watered and poof away. You do get to start the game with uh, some particular power-ups. You've got like a ninja star, you've got acid rain, and you've got lightning. Now, this is the only time y'all will ever hear me praise acid rain, but acid rain's pretty good. I'd go with acid <laughs> rain if I were you. And... Uh, it's It's got several different difficulty levels. I've been on the easy level, and I have to say, after several days of obsessively kind of playing this game when I get a minute, I really haven't gotten past three uh, levels of it. Uh, you end up getting a zombie chopper that throws these flaming eyeballs out at you. And, of course, if you're a Mel, your first thought is, wow, that's a lot of eyeballs. <laughs> so you have to wonder, you know, where would they harvest all these zombie eyeballs? But um, uh, it's not just zombies that they throw at you. There are creepy little skeletons, and you get some vampire bats that when they get too close and you haven't killed them, they turn into Nosferatu, and they're, they're hard. They're hard. It, it's going to take two shotguns to bring them down. See, I think so, that's where you need to use the holy water, though, because vampires and yes. holy water. Yeah. Well, the, zombies, the zombies should just be laughing at you and then eating your yeah. face off. Yeah, but but the holy yeah. water will work on all of them if you're getting mobbed. The problem is is that the, as, as the level goes on, you get more and more of them on the screen. And the ones that are closer to you and are bigger on the screen, they're going to take at least two pistol shots to bring down. And if you don't have two shots in your gun, you have to stop tapping the screen. And as all good button mashers know, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to stop mashing the screen. So it's fun. It's a very simplistic, easy game. It's not going to require a lot of brain power to figure out how to play. And it's oddly addicting. And it's got a... um kind of metal music um, soundtrack going on, too, which is fits with the theme. So this episode's going to be out mid-October about and getting close to Halloween. So this will be good if any of you haven't played it yet. It has a lot of reviews on iOS, but on iTunes, but I hadn't played it before. I went to the Android store because there's not a lot of reviews out, but I think it's fun. And... As I said, oddly addicting because I can't seem to get past that third level. And I just keep going back, trying over and over and over again. And just staring in awe at all the zombie eyeballs that fly around the screen because they're mesmerizing. Please, please tell me some of the power-ups include a holy water sprinkler or holy water slip and slide. No. <laughs> they do not. They do not. It's very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. That's going to be in an upgrade. That's going to be some DLC or something. It might be one of those in-app purchases, but there I haven't go. checked any of that out yet. So, so it's Mel, totally I th free. I think they yeah. owe you some money. Unfortunately, they can't pay you because it's a free app. But uh, well, maybe through advertising. I think you just wrote their tagline for them unknowingly. So it's a game about zombies that requires no brains. Yes, it does. I like, I like that. That's perfect. That's a, <laughs> That's a, that's I'm pretty brainless, so I am the target audience. There we go. <laughs> no. I'm Nobody's not. saying that, but Kelly might yeah. be. I'm not saying that. Kelly, yeah. well, I'm not saying that where she can hear me. <laughs> right, right. We're recording now. That would be bad. She can read um, lips, even in that little little section in the lower right-hand corner when you're muted. 
Yep. We, we have clearly established that the intellectual uh, weight of this show does not reside in Illinois. Um, so the <laughs> uh, yeah, I just it, to Matt's point a little bit. It, it sounds really cool, and I'm definitely going to get it. Uh, I do struggle a little bit. That feels like they, they they have a bit of a trope violation in terms of holy water as a zombie neutralizer, but but. I get it for the, you needed something to scatter them. So it's, like I said, the, gameplay wise, it's going to be cool, but, but uh, um, uh, I think yeah. that's the first holy water zombie combo I've ever heard of, but still, and the flaming, the flaming eyeballs sound pretty fun. So yeah. Yes. I'm, and, I'm and there's to... a zombie oh. chopper. Ahead, no. Okay. There's, there's a zombie flying a helicopter that's throwing these eyeballs at you and you actually you have to damage the helicopter to make it stop or I, it, may, it might never stop i don't know the game stops when you run out of little health bars little, little hearts <laughs> and so, then you die and then you die the eyeballs win and it's all over the whole the whole holy water zombie thing has got me stymied a little too i'm tempted to throw the flag on that one but i'm going to reserve <laughs> judgment until i play the game i will i will download and play the game though Okay. I can yeah, let it go because put, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if you you know if you really kind of pull hard at at uh, most of the other those those style of games you play, there's not necessarily strong physics behind <laughs> all the rules. So maybe we're being a little too picky here <laughs> on that because gameplay wise it sounds awesome and I'm definitely gonna and it's my favorite price uh, free so free. I'll be I'll be giving mm-hmm. that a smile. Very cool. Yep. Yeah, and you're, and you're right, Mel. Timing-wise, this will be coming. I would assume probably around mid, mid October. So um, uh, it's good Halloween-ish kind of recommendation. Yes. Cool. Well, we will move on into social media recommendations, and I am super excited about mine for this week because it gives my simple mind uh, hours and hours of enjoyment. Um, and the name of this account uh, is. Faces Picks, and that's F A C E S P I C S. So faces and picks put together, pick P I C S. And the name of it is Faces and Things. And basically, this is a Twitter account that takes pictures of things like a house, and it's saying you can see a face in it, or a chair, and you can see a face in it, or a computer, and you can and you get the idea. And they are hilarious. Um, the most recent one was a, an astonished end table. You get a picture of an astonished end table. How can you beat that? So it, uh, it's a nice little timeline addition. Uh, and their tagline is, admit it, you see a face. And <laughs> faces and things, faces picks, at faces picks. That's my recommendation for social media this week. That's awesome. In a house I grew up in, in, in uh, the 1980s, we had some wood paneling in, in one of our rooms. And I swear to you, one of these knots looked exactly like Chewbacca. <laughs> I saw Chewbacca's face in our wood paneling. See, you should have taken a picture and sent it into these. That would have been perfect for this account. I was, I was like six. <laughs> I didn't have the presence of mind, nor digital technology. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a problem. But I guarantee you, go to this account, you're going to smile. You're just going to see face after face after face. <laughs> That's awesome. Although the Chewbacca one would be a great addition. That's a shame that that one may have gotten away from us. I, I when we moved, I was a oh gosh, I was a just before my sophomore year of high school, I should have taken a knife and like gone into the closet where there was all the same paneling and cut one out. I should have, I should have just cut one out of the wall and taken it with me. I think I'd only know. A little audio bite right there, Matt. <laughs> that's going to be <laughs> go in the closet with a knife and cut one out. <laughs> you know, it's just, I think that's going to be handy. So appreciate it. Thanks for, for that drop. Uh, I don't know why I come on this show. Because we beg. <laughs> it smells nice. It smells nice. Yeah, Mel's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> oh. Out of Context Theater presents... And speaking of which, out of, what do you have, uh, uh, Mr. Matt, for a social media recommendation for this week? All right, so I have Stephen Amell. He is the star of Arrow. He plays Arrow on the, uh, the CW show. This guy is all over social media. His, his uh, Twitter handle is Amelie Wood. You can find him on uh, Facebook, Stephen Amell. He is an all-around interesting character, cool guy. I mean, he, he is genuinely the one running his, his, uh, his social media because he makes mistakes. 
he owns up to them, and he comes back, and his fans love him. So one of the things that he's doing right now is he is uh, selling T-shirts for, and I'm not going to say the full uh, the full organization because it's slightly vulgar. I will just say F Cancer, if that's acceptable. Yes. Uh, he is selling uh, T-shirts. Uh, some a fan of his photoshopped something uh, on his face and put it on a T-shirt, and now they're selling them. Uh, he took a picture one time of a of a post-it note on his forehead, and he's pointing to it. It said something else, but now it says, you know, F Cancer, sinceriously, which is a word he claims to have made up. Uh, Captain ML. I don't know why he's calling himself Captain. I missed that part, but whatever. Um, their goal was to sell 500 T-shirts with 100%, 100% of the proceeds going towards the, uh, the F Cancer campaign. Uh, they have, as of this broadcast, the recording of this broadcast, 18 hours left to go. They have sold 17,096 shirts with all proceeds going to F Cancer. Um, this dude sees a cause, jumps all over it, points his fan base to it, and then happy things happen for people in need. I think that's really, really cool. I think it's an example of a celebrity doing it right, and I can't wait to see what he does next. So uh, on, on Twitter, it's uh, Ameliwood, A-M-E-L-L-Y-W-O-O-D, and on Twitter, it's Stephen Amell, like I said, star of Arrow. Just seems like a really cool cat and using his powers for good. And he's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in there because I know I follow him already. And he's pretty. He's pretty. He's pretty. That's good. Yeah, oh. it's nice charity stuff like that, but any pictures of chairs that look like a face? I don't think so. Well, no. we could have a crossover. I'm sure if he, if he, if he sees <laughs> that, he might be interested. I'm just saying my recommendation might be moving society forward just a little bit quicker than yours. So. <laughs> Because we all need chairs. There's the, there's no way to argue with that. Not because your point's valid, it's because you're insane. There's no <laughs> way to argue against an insane person. Uh, well, my social media recommendation this week um, is also an actor. It is David Hewlett, and his Twitter handle is at D Hewlett, and that's H-E-W-L-E-T-T. -T. Um, many of you may know him from Stargate Atlantis. He also, there was a sci-fi movie a couple of years ago called Morlocks. Do you remember that one, Kelly? He was in it, but I believe he also wrote it. I could be wrong, though. Anyway, I'm he is very... Well, how, how long ago was that? It, it's been about two years, I want to say. Uh, not to mention it, I think. There's been so many sci-fi movies. But, yeah. <laughs> yes, and um, but it, it, was, it was fun in... With bad bad CGI, I mean that that's pretty standard fare for a sci-fi movie. But he is a very funny guy, and he also runs his own Twitter account. He's not as pretty um, as Stephen Amell, but he who is, is really? I mean, <laughs> who the, is? Really now we have the Stephen Amell scale that we're we'll applying <laughs> to everyone moving forward. Right. He's, uh, on a scale on a scale of Steve Buscemi to Stephen Amell, where does your where does your guy fall? He's go. better than Buscemi. I I'd say he's he's above halfway. I mean he's you know I think he's adorable because he's such a, a a little nerd and he's very genuine in his nerddom. He will often it, for those who don't follow him, he also has a very active YouTube channel and he puts out a ton of little videos that are just a few minutes long. Uh, he's been moving recently and he just got a new house and he one of his recent videos was taking people on a tour through his new house complete with all of the crap that you have sitting around from a move and the whole time I'm watching it I'm going I bet your wife is going to kill you for showing all of this crap everywhere. I mean, they literally had just moved in and there were half opened boxes everywhere. Um, but he's he's great fun. He is friends still with all of the, the people from Stargate Atlantis. He is a big supporter of science fiction television and movies and he's working on a lot of his own stuff, which I have found a lot of it to be very entertaining. So I suggest everybody follow him. 
just because he is a very genuine, a genuine person in, well, he's in Canada. He's a Canadian mm -hmm. actor. So he's over in their version of Hollywood, you know, where all of our American TV shows go now to be made. Um, he's over there making all of them. And he's great fun. And he's just a really genuine guy who really loves science fiction. And I just, I've always thought it was just adorable that he uh, has a lot of the same loves as the character that most people know him as, Rodney McKay on Stargate Atlantis. So go follow him uh, at D Hewlett on Twitter. I suggest y'all check him out. So just for clarity, when when Canada was mentioned, was there a disapproving groan I heard from Kelly, or was what was that? Uh, <laughs> Canada and I have a long history, so it it uh, it just comes back to uh, back in the day um, until I was found out I was a, a programmer. I developed applications, and uh, in the process of developing applications uh, that had a financial nature to them. Uh, we had to deal with Canada, which is different. There are different things. It's not the same monetary system. Uh, so you, and when you're trying to pour it out in American dollars and you've got the bones and sticks or whatever they pay for stuff in Canada, it's trying to work it all out. And, uh, and it bones was just hard. Sticks. States, you know, states, they don't have, they don't have American zip codes, and, you know, and these, these kinds of things. And so it just made everything harder. And so, um, so I've always, always sigh a little bit when Canada is mentioned because they made my life difficult and I really just wanted us to invade them and make them upper Dakota, uh, <laughs> simply <laughs> to simplify my code. It had really nothing to do with culture, politics, whatever. It was just harder to code for Canada. And if they were a state, it'd be, yeah, okay. One more. We state. just want to give them a zip code. That's all. Yeah. If they, if they just play along. <laughs> I have a similar, I have a similar problem at my work. We do a lot of business with, uh, clients in Canada and for some reason we we have a lot of difficulty getting paid and we have difficulty getting the mail because my com my computer system does not support Canadian uh, postal service addresses so I feel your pain man yeah. and see because I think they, they they deliver postage by like a small animal that they, they tie it to the animal and <laughs> they tie I'm, it I'm to some seals and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's different so, and it's <laughs> It's a Canadian version of Hogwarts. Instead of an owl, it's like a small woodland creature. Yes. A vole, yeah. You know, it just that kind of moves along. It's and, and it's not fair to, that you say they they trade sticks and bones. That's that's not that's offensive. That's not true. It's pelts. It's animal pelts. Yes. You need to know your history. That's right. All right. Yeah. No shoes and fur. But they're very polite. I'm too bu I'm too busy looking faces and things to worry about history. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours have you lost in that thing? Oh, it is just it's it's like crack. I just it's just, I go, oh, there's another one. There's another and I, it just delights me to know it when I just go, looky there. Uh, it's I a see face. That, face. that face looks like a lion. You know, it's just I don't know. It just <laughs> makes me happy. So. so, are you are you seeing faces out in the wild now? I I'm tr I'm I want to so desperately. Because <laughs> you need you need to be contributing, all right. Right now you're just you're just mooching off this site. You need to have your your camera phone at the ready at all times. That's right. I I hope my my dream will be to have a photo of mine uh, retweeted or linked to their account or something. That would be great. But uh, dare to dream. It, it's it's a big one. It's a big dream. <laughs> but you know you gotta you gotta go. <laughs> all righty. Um, before I, uh, but thank you, Canada. I really do like it because at least according to Twitter analytics, super awesome tool. Uh, I've got about twice as many followers in Canada as I do in Australia. So if I'm going to tick anybody off, I should be ticking Australia off, not Canada. So, um, yes. so my apologies for the whole pelt sticks and bones thing. So, <laughs> and this is the point of the show, uh, Matt, where typically Mel just kind of gets a stern look on her face and goes, dance, monkey, dance, and then we play your audio. But instead, I'll introduce you <laughs> more nicely than Mel does and say, hey, I think we're going to have uh, Matt give you the information on how you can connect to nurture and support. Yay. <laughs> Hooray. You can contact us on our website, nurtureandsupport.net or email us at nurtandsup at gmail.com. That's N-U-R-T-A-N-D-S-U-P-P -P at gmail.com. Or tweet us at nurtandsup on Twitter. Nurturing and supporting.